Hi there, I'm going to discuss the basics of Cisco Discovery Protocol. And Cisco Discovery Protocol is a layer two protocol that operates to help you discover all of your local hardware. And it is concerned with hardware that's directly connected. It is at layer two of the OSI model, not layer three, it is not routable. It is strictly concerned with directly connected hardware. Now layer one is all the physical stuff, wires, network cards, switches, routers, and um, the MAC addresses that are transmitted over wires. The MAC addresses are layer two, HDLC is a la layer two, a link layer or a data link layer protocol and uh, helps you discover what is in your immediate neighborhood. Now. In order to get going with this, what we're going to do is simulate a couple of routers that we are communicating over. And uh, what we'll do first is enable our console and we will go to global configuration mode. And we'll begin configuring by giving a host name to router1 of R1. And then we'll go to device 2, which in our case is going to be router 4. And we will enable that interface, that terminal. And we will go to global configuration mode and give it a host name of router 2. Now, before I go any further, what I would like to do is... I would like to give you a visual of the network we're working on and we're just it's very simple it's a direct connection between two devices but this is the overall uh, network config we got seven eight devices including the PC but it's between router 1 and router 4 now router 1 has a few interfaces a couple of Ethernet cards a couple of serial ports and what it is is serial 0 is connected to router 4 directly this line right here. And router 4 is a simpler device with only two interfaces and serial 0 as you see is connected directly to router 1. And that's what we're working with. Now <clears throat> to get started here what we'll do is we'll bring up the serial port on router 1. And we do that by going into interface serial 0 now you see the uh, prompt changes to dash IF ind indicating that you're in an interface configuration mode and we're going to give the no shutdown command. Now you see it changes the state of the interface to up. Watch. It'll go back down. Change state to down. Why is that? With a serial connection if you don't have another serial port on the other end suitably configured, it will not remain up. The, pro the protocol goes down. And uh, one end of a serial line has to be clocking a uh, signal just to keep communications going. So what we'll do is we'll go to router 4's serial 1, and we'll go to interface serial 0 and we'll uh, bring it up but first we have to set a clock rate to give you a, an indication of how to use help files in this fashion as well so you know you gotta set a clock rate type in the word clock question mark in this case you have only one option the word rate so it's clock space rate I want to I don't remember exactly what number I should use or could use so I want to use the question mark again and it tells me the options I have after the word rate now and I'm going to use 6400 baud rate now I'm going to say no shutdown <coughs> on serial 0 router 4 <coughs> And in this case, um, it'll stay up forever. Now, what do you think we'll see if we go over to router 1? If you were sitting at the console of router 1, you would have seen that the uh, line serial 0 would have come up because router 4 came online. Now it's communicating.
Well, now that we're back on router 1 in interface configuration mode, let's bring up Ethernet 0, interface Ethernet 0, no shutdown. Actually, I'm just going to say no shut. That's the abbreviation. Interface Ethernet 0, change state to up. That'll stay up. It's not like a serial port. And now that we've got a couple of interfaces up and running, let's see what CDP tells us. So we need to exit out of our configuration modes to do a show command. Show CDP interface. And if we look here, we see that serial zero is up, line protocol is up, encapsulation is HDLC, sending a packet every 60 seconds, hold time is 180 seconds. Let's try another command here called show CDP neighbors now that it's running. Now if you were on a large network you'd have a lot of neighbors. This is very simplified. Show CDP neighbors. And what you do is you get a uh, little table here telling you what the various codes mean, like the capability codes. You've got routers, transbridge, source root bridge, switches, hosts, IGMP, and repeater. In this case, we have a router of the 2500 series, and it's interesting. says R2. Oh, okay. So that's fine by me. What I did was I accidentally named R4, R2. So let us not be confused. Okay. That's fine. <clears throat> the show CDP neighbor detail command shows devices one at a time. So let's give that a shot. Show CDP neighbor detail. It's used to display network layer address information when you want that. The command also displays the iOS version that's running on the device, and you'll notice that devices are listed in order. So if you wanted to find out information about a device further down, you'd have to scroll down using the spacebar if you had a lot of devices listed. Now there's a similar command here, and that's show CDP entry. In this case, we've got to type in R2. And what it is, is this is one of the few case-sensitive commands in Cisco, show CDP entry. And you enter the specific name of a specific device, so you do not get a huge list. In this case, it is device R2, which is actually R4 on the network in this case. But there it is. The show CDP entry command will show you the same information as CDP neighbor detail, but it specifies one device at a time. Now, if you just wanted general details for CDP, just to see how that is configured, you type in show CDP itself. And as you see, it's configured to send out a packet every 60 seconds. It will hold the last information received for two minutes total time. And it's CDP version 2, which is enabled. Now, you can administratively change these figures. And what we'll do is go into configuration mode, conf t, and we will type in CDP timer 45. So every 45 seconds, it sends out an updating packet instead of every 60 seconds. You can also change the hold time. CDP hold time is 60 seconds or one minute. So if we exit out and go to show CDP, 
That's what we have now. Now, there are two situations where you may not want CDP to run, possibly. If you have a very, very large network and CDP updates do take some bandwidth, you may want to stop CDP from running or just temporarily stop it from running. Or if you have an extremely simple network and you don't require a discovery protocol because you know exactly what you've got, but you can tell it to not run by saying, global configuration mode, no CDP will run. Usually, to stop a command, you just negate the positive version, like CDP run versus no CDP run. So if you get out of this and you try to show CDP, CDP is not enabled. So now you go to conf t CDP run, exit, show CDP, it's back up and running, and that's about it. Thank you.